and then being really honest with the community about where I was. So, so saying like, I need to rest. You need to rest. Like, <laughs> we all like, need we, to rest. Yeah, we all need to rest. And be Hello and welcome to Tea Talks. My name is Sid and I am the creator of Roots Holistic and Tea Talks, which is an intentional space for conversation around mindfulness, healing, and liberation. Today we are fortunate to have Ashley Williams joining us. Ashley Williams is a yoga therapist and a mindfulness educator with 12 years of experience in the fields of education, behavioral mental health, and community programming. As a builder and weaver, she bridges mindfulness, diversity, and wellness and inclusion on a micro and macro level to achieve equitable, social, stable, and conscious spaces for individual and collective care. She is the founder of Bear Soul Yoga and Wellness, a community-based organization initially created to offer accessible yoga, as well as mindful, on life and mindfulness and movement, which are both curriculum-based programs dedicated to transforming community through the practice of mindfulness and education. You can find more details about Ashley um, at BearSoyoga.com um, or at info at BearSoyoga.com. So, welcome Ashley. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So I always want to start these tea talks with just a check-in, you know, a few words. How have you been today or this past week? How are you feeling? Yeah. So different than probably the past couple of weeks, I actually feel really grounded and clear this week. So my energy has been very like, it's been good, um, which in the past few weeks have been really kind of cloudy and really low but today especially I'm feeling really kind of like bright and full so yeah, yeah. that's wonderful yeah I mean I think that there could be a little bit to do with the um solar eclipse that happened on Sunday um mm -hmm. that kind of like helped us get into like a new shift of energy like it was a new moon it's a new cycle um, but I can relate because last week I was feeling, I mean, it's a lot. It's everything that's going on is a lot to process right now still. So I definitely understand feeling like the pressure of that. Um, yeah. So I'm wondering, um, being a black woman business owner and being in a field where you are working to hold spaces and um, hold safe spaces for people to do this mindfulness work, to learn these skills of empowerment. Um, I can imagine that there's a sense of responsibility that comes with being the person who's organizing these spaces. And then with you saying that um, this time kind of slowed things down, how did you find the balance between like feeling this need to slow down because there's a lot to process and also holding this responsibility of like, I am still needed in all these different spaces. Yeah, that's a, that was definitely a challenge. I did feel pressure in some spaces, but I go back to um, like Audre Lorde's quote, self-care is literally like necessary for us. Like, right. It's an, it's a, it's revolutionary and we need that, um, in this moment. And she speaks like just a lot about that. And so that was really important to me is that like my, like I was supporting myself to create foundation to support other people, especially with like the immense amount of uncertainty that was in front of us from like financial stability to um, family health, to my own health, to community health, to, you know, just everything was like uncertain at a time, but I honestly felt really grounded from supporting myself first. And so that lays really strong foundation. And I had to have a really um, honest talk with myself about what does it look like and like, what did it look like to support me? And then like, what, 
what did it look like to support myself? What support and resources did I need to call into? And then on and just like really be really authentic and move from that space. Um, and so that was really, that literally was my only tool. And so that led me into making and moving in the ways that felt right. Um, because my previous self, right. I have a tendency to just like really move and not listen to that. Like with self-care really being a, a practice of resilience and self-care really being a practice of, um, it's just needed and it's not something it's like, we have to support ourselves. So that's really how I made that decision. And then everything that I've offered from that space of first supporting me and then also supporting and encouraging the people that worked and offered through, especially like their soul, like honoring that space and honoring my space, I think has really set a strong foundation to get a clear view on how we offer into the community. And then being really honest with the community about where I was. So, so saying like, I need to rest you need to rest. Like, <laughs> we all like, need to rest. <laughs> yeah, we all need to rest and being like, you need to support yourself. These are the tools that you can use. So offering like that truth and honesty and modeling that for our community, I think was like the way that I showed up responsibly. Um, because one thing that I noticed is that when we went into the shift, there were so many like quick actions and reactions. And I think that after that initial moment, people slowed it down a bit and then really kind of made some more strategic planning that worked to move through this time. Um, I think it's important to make that as our, our boundary, or as our foundation. For sure. I have like two questions for you, but the first one is, um, what is, we'll say like, what are your like top one or two um, supportive practices. So when you're saying that you like grounded down and found practices that were supporting you, what were those that you found like really supportive? The first one was um, being active in like my role and my identities to the people that were around me that like are the closest to me. So as like as a daughter, as um, a sister, as um, like as a friend. So like really supporting people that were very much supporter of me and who I am um, was really important. So it was just like making sure that my family was safe or like making sure that we like they were seen and they were heard. And then for me, so that felt really good, really diving into those deep supportive relationships through conversation, through checking in, through intentionality. Whereas that's not something that like was priority. Like it was something that I did but to do it intentionally um, really helped support me because it was it was just that deep connection uh, and that access of love um, that I think was just really needed in that space. And it was always there, but to really sit into that space was really helpful um, as a support. And then the other thing was just doing the things that really brought me joy in a space of like not having a concept of time. So it's like, I didn't have any expectation for like what the day had. However, I let time just like flow. So like, I didn't wear a walk for the first like couple of weeks. Like I just let myself really intuitively listen in to like what I needed and, and followed that. And so a lot of that looks like having a ritual in the morning. So it's just like, especially at the beginning of COVID, um, what I did was like, I woke up every morning and made like hot water and lemon and like ginger. Right. And then I like meditated and then I started a coffee chat or I had a coffee chat with a friend, um, every morning at eight o'clock. And so then that started my day. And then at night I was like in bed by like nine 30 every night. And so that grounded me for a while. Um, but then now that that's not necessarily in place. Um, yeah, so I, was now I'm, say, I was about to say, so as things yeah. are opening back up, yeah. what is, <laughs> yeah. so like what that kind of the coffee chat and the ritual stopped like an, like a month and a half into like COVID. So I think it was like all of March into mid April. And then probably like at the end of April is where I started having challenges because we started having even like, not just COVID, but then we started having like all of these like racial um, 
like elevations and activations like right in front of us. And so that kind of shifted priority just a bit and also shifted emotion. So it's just like the, the routine that worked for me then needed like was different um, because I just needed, honestly, I needed less routine. Okay. Uh, and so that was just really interesting. And now I'm starting to get back into like that space, like after that month of May and then like, I guess now June, it's like trying to find those things that are grounding me. So right now it's looking a little different, like disciplined meditation um, and meditation specifically like at my altar and like supporting my altar and like bringing things in that I think like that I need to kind of just like support my, uh, my awareness and my sit. So that's been important. Yeah. I, I think I, can relate and I I can feel like the energy like where there was like a period where everything kind of slowed down and it was so much easier to like return to oneself and be like okay well what do I need and like putting in those routines and rituals that feel really nice and then it 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 has just kind of transformed into this space of like things are opening back up and then yes there is like so many almost triggering things that are happening when it comes to um, racial injustice. That is, that's always been there. That's always yeah. been there, but yeah. like, it's it, it, not new. <laughs> it's heightened right now. And I, like, I can agree that like, I definitely have been pulled out of, um, out of routines that were helpful. And so it, it does kind of bring up this question of how do we, because it reminds me of like going to Kapalu or somewhere where like they're like when we're in like this concentrated space and it's super easy to like find a flow. Um, and then when we're back into the real world, it becomes a little bit harder. Um, so, but I, I like what you're saying about there giving yourself grace to sometimes routine isn't going to work instead of being that harsh critic on oneself if it's not happening right then and there. Thank you. Yeah. Grace. Um, Grace. Oh, that's that has been the key. <laughs> um, so I'm what curious. Are you doing? Hmm? I'm curious about what supports you had. Like, what have you been doing to like kind of stay grounded? Um, I think sitting outside, even if it's like just on my balcony, you know, just like sitting outside has been helpful and like the mindfulness activity of just like becoming aware of sound so like I like to like just like sit outside and like notice what sounds are happening and that has been really helpful for like in like a quick moment of like oh like I'm all the way up here I need to come down that is something that helps ground me in the moment and oh walking I I've started to walk every day which I don't I mean being a um, a teacher of movement in ways, I feel like oftentimes I'm like, oh, well, I've just like taught this class, so I've done my movement. But to like carve out space for like movement just for me <laughs> mm -hmm. has been a really helpful thing. And the walks have been really, really nice. Um, where I, like I can notice a difference. Like if I don't go out and walk for a day, like I, like I am more anxious and more stiff and just there's so much information that seems to be coming in like that my system yeah. is taking in on a regular basis that if I'm not moving it in some type of way out of my body or redistributing it then like I can feel it and it's just like heavy so, yeah. That was yeah intentional movement has definitely been been something that I have both like really been um like it's been a support right and then my like stillness on the other end has also been a support so I've been having to be very mindful about like what's stored in the body and like how my body needs to respond so I'm glad you brought that up too that's been good um okay so this is a question that I want to ask everybody but what is a vision that you have for a better future because right now it feels like we're kind of at this like precipice of change where every there is a new awakening that like, things need to change. Um, and so I'm curious about like, obviously I know that you have 
lots of visions, but <laughs> one vision <laughs> for like what the better future looks like um, and how you want your work to contribute to that. Yeah. I think the one like most clear is that we are actually um, honoring our connection uh, through consciousness in a very compassionate way. And what that looks like um, to me is that each of, each of us take such good care and spend time and sit with like who we are. Like we, we actually put self-care as a priority and self-care meaning self-reflection. Like we're all taking the time to like take care of ourselves physically and mentally and emotionally. And, and from that, we then understand our interconnectedness with other people. And so then that encourages us to then take care of those around us. So it's not just like, I'm here to take care of myself and my family unit, but like, I'm here to take care of like anybody that comes around me. And so I really think that, um, like the work that, um, I land in, which is really encouraging authentic self-care and like self-care that can be unconditional and, um, uncomfortable, like understanding that is like understanding and doing that work then leads us to this very like beautiful space that's like unified and that is true and um and systematically like even beyond that physical circuit is that there is like equity like right like everybody's equal so like the wealth there's no wealth gap right like there's access to food and and things for people to take care of themselves there's like there's just so many things i think that could make us a more systematically equitable space but i think a lot of that starts with all of us like doing our own individual self-care and so my hope is that i continue to show up to hold space um for people to care for themselves learn the tools practice communicate be supported but then also like really work hard within institutions to break those systems down mm -hmm. through like training. So, um, so continuing to show up in schools and continuing to show up in corporations and, and things like that. Yeah. I, I think that it's, it's an exciting thing that when you get to a point like we are now and there's a realization that the work that you've been doing is still beneficial it, like it's still the work like it still applies <laughs> yeah <laughs> like it's not like the restaurant like that just like shuts down it's like i don't think that this work is ever like ever ending right i think it's constant and it's going to continue yeah any advice that you have for anyone yeah well i think my biggest feeling right now is that um and I think it's something that's been said and it's been heard a lot, but like our current state is, um, it's definitely a movement. Like we've always been in a movement and um, I think we're all experiencing a lot of different things like in this very moment, which is valid and um, all of our experiences are different, right? And so I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging not just myself, but everyone just to like honor where we are because I think it's really valid information, which is where the mindfulness practice shows in is just like, really honor where where we are individually it's one thing that i've been trying to do and use that as information to like to mindfully move forward to to um to change and transform in ways that are going to be beneficial for everyone um so my biggest hope too is that we we understand the moment and we mindfully move forward um with the same energy that's gonna like sustain us with like rest or like the same awakening the same like interest continuing to move forward like i think the beautiful thing about just being mindful is that we don't have to shift the experience right we are with the experience and so right now we're in this space of there's so many things going on so it's like how can we just continue to sustain and move forward so like change continues to happen and transform and we continue to take care of each other and we continue to take care of ourselves um so my biggest thing is i hope that this continues like we continue to move moment by moment by moment um then we just do that by literally being with ourselves um and being in community and being in conversation and being in each in each of these moments in a very 
open way. So I feel like that's what liberation is too. Cause I think we're entering this space of like freedom each and every day. Um, if we choose to be in that yeah. and it's not just an action. A lot of times it has to do, it's not just a physical action. It's also like a mental action. Um, it's like a mental thought and a mental choice that we have to continue to like move through and remind ourselves where we are and how we are. I'm glad that you brought up sustainability because that's another thing that I feel like why self-care is so important is especially in movements is because like we have to be able to sustain ourselves and not burn out. Um, and like the rest element is so crucial for, for avoiding burnout, right? Mm -hmm. so I'm grateful that you are holding spaces to help people with that rest element and with that acknowledgement of self. Um, and I'm also hopeful that although things are opening back up, that people will continue to find those supportive practices and those grounding practices and still prioritize rest, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And rest can look so many different ways. Right. So like I always say, like our rest is really just like our nervous system in balance. Right. And it's like not heightened or elevated or we're not like at the stress response. Like our rest can be like walking or it can be like we get our rest during actual physical sleep. Our rest can be in conversation that's supportive. Our rest can be in journaling. Our rest can be in planting. Our rest can be in or gardening, I guess would be the better word. But our rest can be in so many different ways that like it's not just like oh our rest means that we're like sitting still and we're sleeping I think that like sometimes like a misconception um but it's like how can you come into a space where like you're accepting of what's happening and then your nervous system is at a balance of you know your parasympathetic nervous system is activated and you're not responding to stress but like we're here um and you can be doing it that can look so many different ways. So um, I think that is important to note too. Yeah, for sure. I'm curious about what your thoughts are in, because again, right now we are all kind of in this heightened state. Um, and I think that a lot of us are kind of feeling like wanting to act, wanting to contribute in some type of way. Um, and thinking about other ways of activism could look like um, and what your thoughts are around that. Yeah, so we all have different roles, right? Like based on our identities, based on our social proximities and locations, based on like our gifts and just going back to like knowing who we are, like giving our, like first bringing ourselves into a space of checking in with us, I think is like key to understand like how our actions like show up. And so um, like taking that moment to like ask like, how do I feel? Like, what are my gifts? What could I contribute based on like, how do I feel like I wanna be supported? And then also just like looking at what's in front of us and just, and, and going from there, but we have to move from a place of self, I think. Um, to begin to choose what our activism is because we all if we were all the same then like we're clearly not offering up our true value to the world and so i i just look at like from my experience is that like we are in in the midst of protests and stuff like when everything first started happening like a big part of me like my passion was really high about you know being vocal and um like being vocal or like it was good to see the energy of others like in the streets and but then I also felt the space where it's just like I play a different role in that and I knew that because also my energy was also calling for rest my energy was also calling for reflection my energy was also calling for meditation my like for listening and deep listening and so when I came out of that I realized you know in that space, like I'll go into like, there's warriors and there's warrior healers, right? There are builders and weavers, there are organizers, 
Um, there are caregivers. There's so many different roles that we can play, but you don't know which role you are unless you know who you are. And so I think that that's where like our practices of sitting deeply to ask those questions is important and feeling okay with like, like your role and owning your role. I think one thing that's happening or that happened, especially at the beginning of this, I haven't had many conversations recently, but is that one comment that I heard, because I've been holding space for a lot of different um, protesters and different organizing groups. And the one thing that I heard from people was that I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. And, you know, like this seems like this seems like the option, right? So you see protests and if you don't know what to do and you don't know what to say, you're going to join the protest, mm -hmm. right? Because it's the thing that's the loudest that's right in front of you and it's what's being taken in. And you don't, sometimes you don't reflect and understand that there are more options out there. And so I think now as people do, like if they've shown up as a protester, if they've sat back and reflected watching the protest, they might kind of begin to find their place, right? So as like the protesters groundwork, those are the warriors. Um, for me, I'll label as like maybe a warrior healer, like holding space for those so they can sustain their work. Um, a builder or a weaver. So like taking what I see and like using the resources that I have and the information that I have to connect resources to then continue to support movement. Like I think people, we all need to just check in with ourselves and our own gifts and our proximities and resources and then choose like our, um, our action from that space. Yes, so what I'm hearing from you is that self-care is not only just a practice to make sure that we are well and we are nourished but it's also a practice to develop an awareness of who we truly are and what our purpose is towards um, a collective movement forward yeah yeah and like just how we show up so um, i think we all play an integral part in how we move forward we just have to listen into ourselves to know what that is. Thank you so much, Ashley, for taking time out to do this tea talk. Um, so grateful for all of those thoughts that you have shared, and I hope that others are able to take some time to sit with them. I think that they are really helpful. Um, thank you all for taking some time out to listen to this tea talk. Just a reminder that Tea Talks are going to be released every Friday. So please check in with us again next week.